And so, yes, we have arrived at this place we were always going to eventually. It shouldn't surprise you very much to know that I really like the gym and I really like fitness and therefore within the world of video games, if a character turns up and they're super duper jacked, I get very excited. It's why when a lot of people say, hey Simon, who's your favorite game of character? I stare at them with rage and say, well, it's Marcus Phoenix. Have you seen his biceps? And the even better thing about this is as video games get more technical and they get more advanced, the bodies that we're seeing just keep getting better and better. And that makes me a very happy and a very strange chap. I understand this, but it also means we can do this. The 10 most ridiculous physiques in video games with me, Simon Miller. Let's do it. Number 10, Asura from Asura's Wrath. Never forget that Asura is hot tempered. Never forget that Asura is stubborn and never forget that he also has six arms and he uses those six arms to punch and destroy asteroids and other space related paraphernalia. Somebody tell me a better character than that. So basically what I've just described is a more angry version of Kratos from God of War and both of those guys clearly been lifting weights in the gym but again Asura has six arms which means he has six biceps and it means he has six triceps and he has six forearms and that just means he's the more jacked of the two, which is why I wanted to start this video off talking about him. He also has around about 57 abs, which is not humanly possible. And I gave him an odd number of abs, so that just looks really weird. But my point is, not only is he ripped, but he's in the shape he would need to be, given what he needs to do in the game, which is basically try and stop all the evil in the universe from winning. So think about that next time you booted up. Number nine, Chris Redfield from Resident Evil. Chris Redfield did some serious working out from when the series began to the point he was the hero once more in Resident Evil 5. Because he was just like a lean athlete when Resident Evil first turned up. But then when we got to the fifth installment, he was so big and he was so muscly that at the end of that game, you have to punch through a rock. And it's Mr. Redfield that does this. And at no point do you think it's that strange because you're like, yeah, he's so jacked he probably could smash up a big stone. It was such a stark transition that it filled up forum threads across the internet everywhere as gamers trying to figure out what had happened. And some individuals even said that it took away from Resident Evil 5, and I quote, because Chris Redfield was unrealistically big. So what do you want from video games? That's what I want. I want someone to turn up and be so muscular I could never actually think about getting to that point. And that's what Chris Redfield is. I mean, look at him. It is absolutely ludicrous. He must have spent the 12 years between games just like doing this. Constantly, constantly with 200 pound dumbbells. It also made me enjoy the game more. I understand that makes me a moron and it makes me a shallow human being. But look at the man. Look at him. Number eight, Marcus Phoenix from Gears of War. I've already mentioned him once and now he comes in here officially, one of the best characters in all of video games. Marcus Phoenix is just a massive man who's fighting in a real war with real guns and stars in a real game. What I never really got is that so many people were critical of this because when they saw Delta Squad along with Dom, Bed and Coltrane, they were like, well, it's just a bunch of jacked up idiots. Why should I like them? But that was the point. That was the idea. Epic Games had designed Gears of War around this idea, but when you actually played it, there was a little bit of a heart there. They weren't just meatheads. They actually had feelings and emotions too. I know this wasn't like a Oscar winning movie, but for what the game was, I thought it did a damn good job. And you know that Microsoft bought into this dude, because if you go and look at any of the artwork for Gears of War 3, it is Marcus Phoenix who has been reduced to a dude that is just wearing a tank top. And you only put your video game characters in a tank top if you want to show them with the deltoids and you want to show off a little bit of the tricep. Not gonna lie, let you in a little bit of a secret. I was editing magazines then and I was responsible for the front cover on one of the said magazines. And when Microsoft sent me this, I was like, I am 100% going to get that on the cover. And I did, and I still consider it one of my greatest achievements. Also, as we are talking about Gears of War, let's not pretend that it's not a really good game. We don't talk about Gears of War Judgment, that was a massive error, but Gears of War 5 brought the franchise back up to where it needs to be. I'm very excited to see what they do next. Number seven, Big Daddies from Bioshock. When you remember what the idea of Rapture from Bioshock was, which of course was to move to a city that was located thousands of miles, well, I guess in the sea, away from the power of government, you're like, oh yeah, that sounds like a really good idea until you get there and find out that no, you have a brand new enemy and it is known as Big Daddy. I mean, that just sounds terrifying. But don't forget the people underneath the masks were the men who had designed this city 
and now of course are responsible for taking care of the little sisters. They've also been brainwashed into being mindless husks. But can you imagine, if you took this big suit off, can you even imagine what you would see underneath? And in terms of physiques, or at least things that are going to be very imposing in the lore or the literature of Bioshock, it says the big daddies stand at seven foot two. And do you know anyone who's seven foot two? No, you don't. That's taller than Shaquille O'Neal, I think. Maybe the same. Straight away, you may be going, well, wait a minute, Simon. It's not a physique then. It's more like a costume. But don't insult them. That's not nice. We'll go with the term suit of armor but it doesn't mean they're not imposing. Plus, how hard were they to kill? Remember when you first played Bioshock, you turn a corner, you're like, oh, that's a big daddy. They whooped your ass. Number six, Ken Shihiro from Fist of the North Star. One of the oldest characters in this list, the thing I like most about Ken Shihiro is that he basically has two forms. One, a dude who is so overly muscular, you wonder what the designers were thinking when they drew him, or two, will still make him big, but will make his neck 850 times bigger than it was before because it will just make him look more threatening. And it worked. He also has a heart though, because if you go back to 2018's Lost Paradise, you indeed do play Ken Shiharo as he tries to survive a nuclear fallout while looking for the love of his life that he has now lost. I mean, come on now, would you shed a tear? It's also made by the same people who make Yakuza, so if you're into that, I really would suggest you go and play this Especially because, again, when you do sit down, you press the start button, and you see our hero, you will laugh out loud because, I mean, his neck's not as big as it has been in the past, but everything out, it's like he's out of a comic book. It looks like he just walked out of a comic book and that he's ready to take on all comers as he does indeed search for his partner. You go get him, pal. You have a few protein chunks along the way. Number five, Max from Streets of Rage 2. Coming from a time when video games were nice and simple, Max is not only a former professional wrestler, but he is someone who has decided to clean up the streets with all this crime, and he's also absolutely defined. I mean, he's just so defined. This comes from like the sprite style of graphics we'll go with, the sprite styles of visuals, where it just looks like somebody chipped away at a drawing until they couldn't chip away anymore. I mean, he got more abs than he's got hairs on his head. But after saving his best friend Adam Hunter from Mafia right-hand man Shiva, Max decides, hey, I've heard about this Axel guy. I'm going to go team up with him and actually try and put some good into this world. And really, if you're looking at it more from a fan point of view, you had Axel, who was like your generic hero, and then Max was the big one. He was the buff one. You always had that. You had like Generic hero, the lady, and the buff guy. Usually the other person would be on a skateboard. The thing I love most about this though is that Streets of Rage continually tells you that Max is just a big guy to the point that Sega decided as they were making it that any time Max was on screen, he would take up about a third of it. Honestly, look how much bigger he is than everybody else. It's kind of silly. And as we are talking about Max, Streets of Rage 4 was just released. That's in April 2020, depending on your watching this. And he is back in the fold. And has he lost any weight? No. Is he still as big as he always was? Yes. Does that make me pleased? You bet your ass. Number five, Guile in Street Fighter V or any real Street Fighter. I mean, you can really take any single Street Fighter character you want from this. You look at Rai, you look at Ken, you look at Zangief, even you look at Dal Sim. Dal Sim may not have the size, but he still has a body fat percentage of around about 8%, and that is damn impressive. The thing when it comes to Guile is that only did he continue to get bigger and bigger through each iteration of the game, but when you remember the Street Fighter movie, and I know we don't talk about it, but we are now, who did the producers decide had to play the American hero? Of course, it was Jean-Claude Van Damme, because Jean-Claude Van Damme was known for his muscles. As we did reference Street Fighter V, though, that's what we have to double down on here, because if you haven't seen Gal's character model, well, you're probably seeing it right now. For whatever reason, the developer just went times 7,000 when it came to him, and he is absolutely ginormous, and that's doubly funny when you look at him in Street Fighter 2 and compare him with how he is now. He's like another Chris Redfield. He just spends all his time in the gym, and he spends all his time eating. Once again, I massively respect him for that. I am nothing compared to Guile. Obviously, as we know, Guile's theme goes with everything. Number three, Brawly in Dragon Ball Fighter Z. The legendary Super Saiyan son Goku has pretty much taken on everybody in the universe. And no matter how much more powerful they get, he always had an answer until you got to Brawly. At least when I do say that, what I mean is when you look at Brawly, it is, I mean, it's frankly ridiculous if I'm being honest. Even I think this one is dumb. He is so big and so ripped, I don't even know what he's been doing. So 
someone said, Simon, I want to look like that guy, I'd be like, well, you've got to become an alien. Not even Gogeta, which was Goku and Vegeta pushed together, was able to beat him with any real ease. And even then, they were like, we're not sure what we're going to do. Look at his trapezius muscles. He looks like flipping Brock Lesnar. If you don't know who that is, just Google him now and you will see what I mean. Brawley is absolutely massive even before he powers up. And when he does, like I say, it just goes on to another level. It's the most Japanese thing you've ever seen in your life. But of course, secretly, deep down, I absolutely love it because it is just so bonkers. How he's not a number one, I have no idea. Number two, Barrett Wallace in the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Nearly 23 years ago, the world was given what many consider to be the greatest Japanese role-playing game ever made. And along with that, you did indeed get Barrett Wallace, who was a dude that walked around with one normal arm and the other arm as a literal cannon. It was cool. He soon developed into a fan favorite over the years, and that's why when Square Enix started to show off footage from the Final Fantasy VII Remake, a lot of people were like, wait a minute, wait a minute, what the hell happened to him? He was just a sprite all these years ago, and now he looks like he's about to compete in a bodybuilding competition. He also seems to have got a lot taller, and the sheer length of the arm cannon just goes on forever. I mean, go check it out. Just go do some comparison pictures. What the hell were they thinking? when they redevelop this. Don't get me wrong, I massively respect it and I think we should all do this. I take Mario. Mario's just a scrawny, kind of out of shape plumber. He should be putting on some size, but Nintendo never do that. I'm gonna give a round of applause to Square Enix. I appreciate this, but I have no idea why he did it. Number one, Stephen Armstrong in Metal Gear Rising Resurgence. Honestly, if more United States Senators look like Stephen Armstrong from Metal Gear Rising, political debates would be far more fun than they are now and they'd probably end far quicker too. So he'd just go, and everyone go, calm down, Steve. An ex-college football star, he gave up his dreams of turning pro to join the US Navy instead. And although he didn't see much combat there, he came out the other side and said, ha, I want to be a politician. And when he did walk down the halls of Congress, he was just massively jacked. I mean, that bit's not explained. I guess in the Army, and the Navy in this case, you are going to do a lot of that. And it's the same if you're going to be a college football player. But it was a bit like he went away as a normal human and came back as the offspring of Arnold Schwarzenegger. It also means when you step into the shoes of Ryden, and you know, you've got to try and take this guy down, you go, well, that's going to be easy. I've been fighting Metal Gears. I can kick a politician's ass. But actually, it's one of the hardest fights in the game. You may disagree with that, but it took me a long ass time. And I'm going to put that down to the fact that Steve had really, really, really big muscles. And that's that. We have got to the end. If you're thinking to yourself, did Simon Miller actually just run down 10 physiques in video games? You can bet your ass I did. But look, in the comments below, let me know who has the best physique in video games. And of course, it's Marcus Felix. He's the best. He always will be the best. Then like the video, share the video, hit the subscribe button, head over to whatculturegaming.com. You can read yourself more articles. You can follow What Culture Gaming on Twitter at What Culture Gaming. And you're already on YouTube. Click away, watch some more videos. My name is Simon from What Culture, though. Thank you very much for joining me. And again, gaming fans, thank you very much for allowing me to come back onto this channel. I mean, so far, I've just run amok, and here I am talking about the gym. But I appreciate it, and I appreciate you.